Hey, what's happening everyone? Here's what we got going on today. 2001 Ford Explorer Fort, Sport, excuse me, 4.0 liter motor. This thing, I'll give you a little history on what's going on here. This thing came in like three months ago. They had it towed in because they said it was having trouble starting and when it did start it ran really bad. So when I got to it, I walked outside and it started right up, drove perfectly. There was no check engine light, no nothing. But the symptoms she described were, you know, common with a bad math or dirty math. They're like a hundred and some dollars for this thing. So I cleaned it, drove it for like 20 miles, never had a problem. That was a couple months ago. Said it did the same thing again yesterday. They were able to drive it in. And I didn't charge them for the last visit because I really didn't have much into it. So today I go out started it fires right up and runs beautifully but at least today I got a check engine light so we'll see what it says Can you see that on the scan tool perfect um, I busted my camera tripod so all this camera work here is going to be a little shaky so let's see what we got here Read codes P0113 intake air temperature sensor circuit high input mass air or volume air flow A circuit low input. So we'll go out and start doing some checks at the mass air flow sensor. We'll get out there and get set up. I'll see you then. All right, here's a situation. Here's your map sensor. I have tried everything I can think of to get this thing to run poorly, to get this thing to screw up. I can't make it happen. So we'll, uh, I'll start it up. And sounds like she got a little bit of valve chatter. All right. You pry on the connection, move it around. You're just trying to see if you can get it to mess up. I mean, you can hear it, it's not skipping a beat. I checked my fuel trim numbers, everything looks good. So, uh, we'll get some voltage readings on this, see how that is. Alright. There's your voltage, that's what it's putting out right now, that's what it's sending back to the computer to tell it how much air that this is taking in. It's not. I mean, that fluctuation you see is perfectly normal because it's not taking in the same volume of air each intake stroke of the cylinder. So, see how it reacts. pretty good to me. So what uh, we'll do is uh, we'll check the signal over the computer. Alright, computer's right here. This T-pin right here is the sensor wire coming over. This T-pin right here is the sensor ground. So I'm going to take my lead off the map here and move it over 
to my control wire, or signal wire I should say, and see what we get. Getting the same reading. So that's telling me that the wire is good. Now what we can do too, I always like to do the wiggle test. I'm wiggling the harness. I'm not going to stick my hand down in there. I've already done all this. This engine's smoking hot. But I'm pulling, wiggling, just trying to see if I can get some type of major change, and I'm getting nothing. So, next we'll check the ground. And I'm going to check from battery negative, see my jumper wire, goes right to my meter, to the sensor ground at the computer. And this is going to be a voltage drop test. And uh, I'm not an automotive electronic genius, but I do believe for sensor grounds you want less, 50 millivolts or less. See, we got 11 there. And uh, no, computer grounds you want 50 millivolts or less. You got 11 there. Sensor grounds 100 millivolts or less. So I'm going to say that's a good ground. So let's do a voltage drop between the uh, ground at the plug and the computer ground. And I took my uh, lead off of my jumper, here's my jumper, took it off, put it right here on the sensor ground, coming over, not which you shouldn't have anything. You got nothing, that's good. So, we'll do the same thing for the sensor signal wire. Take my lead off the sensor ground. Computer ground, I should say, I'm sorry. Take my lead off of here. Pull my T-pin out. And something I gotta say, if you're going to use T-pins, I don't recommend you do it, because if you screw up, if you have two T-pins in here when you're troubleshooting, if this T-pin touches the T-pin that's in the ground, you will cook the computer. I mean, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You'll be putting a computer in this after that. So just use caution if you're going to do it. I'm not telling you to do it. If you are, be careful. Nothing. That's good. So we'll do a power. No, I can't do that. So now we'll do, we'll shut her down. So now I'm just going to do a straight up ohm test. I'm going to ohm these wires out between the sensor and the computer to see what type of resistance the wire has. It should be zero to extremely low resistance so right now we're in the signal wire on the computer we are in the signal wire on the sensor we will put our ohm meter to ohms and you can see there is no resistance there at all it's like they be considered like a dead short you know it's no resistance, perfect flow of current between these wires. We'll go to a bit different scale. There's two megs, two mega ohms. Nothing. So we'll do the grounds now. Move it over. Clip her on. Remove that lead. Move it to my ground. See what we get here. 
Nothing. That's perfect. So. I won't even come back. I'll do. I'll aim this out from the computer to battery negative. Alright, here's my connections here. Computer to meter positive, meter negative to battery negative. What are we reading? I'm going to say 3 mega ohms. That's 3 million ohms. That's like almost no resistance at all. So, yeah, it's, I can't get it to run bad, so it's, it's a really tough call to say that this thing's bad, because, I mean, my grams per second seem good. I don't have a, uh, a scope. I could scope this thing and see what type of frequency we're getting out of it. I don't have that luxury, because I don't have a scope, so... I'm going to call it and I'm putting a $100 math sensor in this thing because I'm going to go by the codes that we had and the fact that the wiring all seems to check out. So that's that. Hope this helps somebody. And like I said, anytime you're messing around with T pins on computer grounds and powers and signal wires, uh, you got to be real careful. You don't want to cook a computer. Be bad enough to cook a computer on your car, but if you're messing around with somebody else and you know, you're fitting a bill for that because you can't charge them, just be careful. Hope you guys enjoy. Like I said, sorry about the video footage. I don't have a tripod anymore. I'll have to buy another one, but I'm pretty cheap. See you guys. All right. I didn't find any like proof positive testing evidence to show me, you know, what I wanted to see, but I'll show you what I found when I started looking at this. You see the, this crack the whole way around here? And this uh, sealant that has leaked out, I think that this thing might have got hot. Pop that up and there's moisture or something in there causing this to screw up because I haven't got the vehicle to mess up yet. And all the testing evidence showed that everything was working fine, but I figured I'd show you too how to clean these. I'm not going to show you, you know, what you have to do to take them off because they're all different. This one's really easy to clean. If uh, you look in that hole right there, yeah, right there you can see those two resistors. One's a hot wire and the other one's just a resistor. I'm not quite sure what it does, but that's what you want to clean. I'm going to get a Q-tip, soak it with a a product such as this right here and gently brush those and then use that product and spray it off. I saw a video on YouTube where a guy was actually cleaning this. This right here is your idle air, or, uh, ig <coughs> excuse me, intake air temperature sensor. This has absolutely nothing to do with measuring the air, the volume of air. All this does is measure the temperature of the air. And when you saw me on the video taking a voltage measurement, that is actually not the correct way to check these. These measure in hertz. My meter does not do hertz. And that voltage measurement, I was just trying to see if this was reacting at all. Now, if I had a scope or if I would have been, had access to a scope, I could have tested it better. A meter doesn't sample fast enough to keep up with the data stream from this to the computer and the computer back to this. So that's about it. And products to clean this with. I've seen a lot of people use, you know, power solve or brake parts cleaner. I've never had a problem using any of that. I just, you know, bought this because it was there. It's a little more expensive. 
and you know if it keeps a customer from coming back or keeps from ruining I mean some of these things cost 500 bucks these sensors like the digital ones and yeah man you don't want to screw it up because a lot of times when I do an oil change for somebody if this is fairly accessible I will pull it out and clean it so that's about it I hope this helps someone, at least with the testing procedures. I wish we could have found some proof positive evidence of what exactly was happening. But we didn't. Sometimes that's just how it goes. And let's see if we can pry this thing open. Take a look on the inside, see what's going on. Let me get some tools. Oh yeah, look at the inside of that. It's covered with gel and dirt. I mean the gel protects that, but there's a wire sticking up right there. I've never taken one of these apart before. Well, that was useless. I was hoping to maybe uh, see a bunch of moisture or something in here. But that top was coming off for a reason. It's like a big wad of snot. It's almost fairly disgusting. Alright guys, have fun. We'll talk to you later.